current apprenticeship programme running? Okay, super. Um, interestingly, City HR do an annual benchmarking survey, um, and as at the end of last year, of those who actually got involved in the survey, only 27% of our respondents had a current programme running. Um, and so it's still, this is still on the too difficult pile for many, many people. In the apprenticeships world, we wear two hats. So we are a training provider at levels six and seven, so that's undergraduate and postgraduate level. And we are also an awarding body, so we teach banking qualifications from level three upwards, including degrees, which means that we also partner closely with external training providers as well to co-deliver programmes to employers in banking and finance. Let's assume that you've made the decision to take on apprentices and your headcount has been approved and you've got the resources to support them and essentially you've got a finance director director that's chomping at the bits, desperate to spend your levy money. I guess for some of you that situation probably sounds quite familiar, however, um, do you, as this picture shows, do you feel as though you're lost in the middle of a maze in the apprenticeships world and really you're not sure which way to turn to find your way out? If you do, don't worry, you're not alone. Um, the apprenticeships regime and government rules and regulations are pretty challenging to navigate at the best of times. From your perspective, uh, you're paying the levy and basically you just want to utilise those funds in order to invest in your future talent pool. And I think we're all agreed that apprenticeships are a brilliant way of doing that. So number one, how is the provider going to um, support your apprentices? So will this be face-to-face -face or remotely? <coughs> Secondly, what about apprentices who are struggling or have particular learning needs? So they're going to need a particular uh, approach um, and much closer support and monitoring. <coughs> Number three, how does the provider plan how often sorry does the provider plan on undertaking progress reviews with you and your apprentices? Number four, what access will the apprentices have to um, learning materials and other supporting resources? And will that be online? Will that be face to face? And finally, and, and really importantly, what kind of commitment do, does the training provider expect that you as the employer are going to make in terms of supporting and guiding the start, your staff? You'll need to think about recruiting apprentices in the first place. So is that something you can manage uh, on your own or do you need the provider's support to do that? Secondly, you'll want to know to what extent the provider is going to be communicating with you, how regularly, the way they'll do that, um, and the people that they're going to be talking to. And then the, the third and fourth points I've got on the slide um, really are based on experience that, that I've got in the role that I do. So um, one is that, the, the third one, sorry, is that... Uh, Employers really value receiving clear, up-to-date data about the progress of their apprentices, which the training provider should be able to provide. And without that kind of information, it is really challenging for an employer to uh, efficiently manage an apprenticeship programme. And the final point is um, about having a dedicated team or point of contact within the provider to go to. So maintaining a constant dialogue between the two parties, so employer and provider, is really fundamental to making an apprenticeship work successfully. Well, what if you're a bank with a relatively small levy contribution, or maybe you simply just you only have appetite to take on one or two apprentices, is it right that you're being excluded from the apprenticeships party, as it were? So this is something I'm hearing really regularly now, and I have been for some time. So mm. it's, it's OK to identify a good training provider, but if they're not willing to offer an open programme that a number of employers can join, then 
you're not going to get very far as a, as a smaller employer. And sadly, a lot of uh, providers as well are very focused on volume because that is their business model. So what's, what's happening is that um, employers are being turned away from providers or worse still, they're being promised programmes that fail to materialise. And that's hugely frustrating and embarrassing as well um, for the employer, particularly if they've recruited an apprentice on the premise there's going to be an apprenticeship programme to join. One of the fundamental points about apprenticeships as well is that they should be open to everyone. They're not about an elite club of the top levy paying employers. And that's really important and I think as, in, as a sector, we need to try and move away from that. So finally, there's uh, one overarching question that you need to ask yourself when you're selecting a training provider. It's a pretty simple one, really. It's, can I work with them? So in summary, you want to choose a training provider that, number one, has proven uh, expertise and experience. Number two, a training provider that is going to take all the complexity out of running an apprenticeship and leave you to confidently focus on the, on the job that your apprentice is doing for you in the workplace. Confident because you know that everything else is being taken care of. Third thing is that you'll want a training provider that's really prepared to listen to you um, and collaborate with you in order to co-create the programme that you want. And finally, you'll want a training provider that's going to put in place all the building blocks throughout the journey, um, right from the start all the way through to endpoint assessment, to ensure a successful apprenticeship, happy and well-supported apprentices, and uh, informed and enabled line managers, uh, all whilst giving you the return on investment that you expect. Mm -hmm.